What's up, World That's Good fam? Welcome back to the World That's Good podcast. Y'all, I'm so excited for this Wednesday. This is actually very special because I have my podcast guest in town. This is so cool. I have Matthew West with us, and it is a joy to have you in West Monroe. I know you have an event tonight, but thanks for carving out some time. This worked out so great. It literally worked well, out I perfect. Happened, I was just walking through the museum here. I'm just a huge oh, you're fan just a of hu- Duck Dynasty, and I happened to find your studios no, here. No, and so. someone was like, Matthew West is in there. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm just buying some t-shirts no 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 no. honestly though i know you're joking but the fan is mutual like we love you Uh, my family loves what you do and my family got to know you because my parents went on tour with you which i'm sure was just crazy oh man well getting connected with your family has been so awesome and being in person today is super cool because so much of what we do nowadays is virtual so So when i found out i was going to be in town for a special benefit concert i was like this is amazing but your mom and dad we went on a tour together and we did a special event for couples. Yeah. And the, it was called Getaway Night. And the, the premise was encouraging couples to have a getaway night before they get so mad at each other that they want to get away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, so that's, that's good. That, <laughs> we had so much fun. And your dad, awesome. like, your dad, man, was crazy. He's crazy. On stage, I swear, it was like, <laughs> uh, he was more of a rock star than I was. Oh but he was gosh. handing out these, like, <laughs> Like sw- these these gifts to yeah. people that were like I don't he has his face on more merchandise than I've oh, ever seen. Oh, it's insane! There was like, one that was like a loofah. Oh, he has loofahs. He has like um, the <laughs> what is it? The chia pets. It's yeah. like the grass that grows. And people were flipping out. He's oh, like, who I wants know. a loofah? Who went? It was uh, amazing. We used to, my sister. So when we used to share a room, we had a bathtub together, and she put my dad's like loofah, and I was like, no, this yeah. is weird. The, yeah. Get the loofah out. <laughs> get the loofah out. Like out his of the face bathroom. on the loofah. It's like, why am I <laughs> washing so my weird. armpit? With Willie. I know, it's so weird. But it's we so went funny. to Waffle House together late one night. Uh-huh. And I mean, it was hilarious because everybody, everybody that worked at that Waffle House, they saw Willie and Corey right away. That's I hilarious. Swear, I've never had such good service at a Waffle House Listen, before. Listen, they, they turned it up for I mean, my they, dad. They, I mean, they kept filling up the coffee every five seconds. <laughs> that Can is I hilarious. Can I get you anything else, sir? That is hilarious. So, they told me. I remember they called me and they're like, we're going to ask Matthew and them to go to Waffle House with us. And they were so excited because oh, like, yeah. that's their place. Like, Even the other night, it was so funny. My mom, we're like, what do we want for dinner? And my dad's like this amazing cook. So, Oh, I she watch. could have asked for anything. She's like, I just want to go to Waffle House. <laughs> well, and your dad, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he ordered almost every item on the menu. Oh, that does not surprise me. That That's him. He looks at the menus like everything, which at Waffle House is really funny because you only got so much room yeah. and they put everything on a different plate. Oh, so it was awesome. I had a so stomach good. ache for a week after, but it was worth well, it. Well, <laughs> speaking of stomach aches, I don't know if you even knew this on tour, but my mom would call me and she'd be like, your dad. She he, okay. She said every time they were doing their Q&A, he had the worst gas. Oh, and I was like, oh. Oh my gosh, I would literally not be able to not laugh. My mom said I had to keep a straight face. Oh. So whoever asked him to go on tour was a gracious person, but no, they're awesome. And they have so much good advice, to be oh, honest. They, they're yeah. such an amazing, godly couple for us, me and Christian Christians here watching, to look up to. Right? And um, they're just awesome. Well, to have, so my wife was with me and Willie and Corey. And so, so there'd be a, a moment in every show where the music would stop and we're all sitting up on stage. And we're just talking about our marriages That's and we're cool. being honest about, you know, things that have worked, things that have haven't, what the Lord's shown us. Mm-hmm. And so I felt, you know, iron sharpens iron. And it was so cool to be able to cool. watch these couples in the audience really soaking yeah, it in. And so and good. we were all coming from the place that your mom and dad, just like my wife and I, and hopefully like you guys, mm-hmm. it's just we never come at it from a place of hair. Let me show you how it's yeah, done. Yeah, we got it figured out. None of no. us have it figured no. out. We're figuring it out as we go along and right. as we keep our eyes on Jesus. So right. I felt like I learned a lot watching your mom and dad. And whenever awesome. you see somebody off of the TV screen too, mm-hmm. right? When you get to know somebody and you're like, okay, they're the, the real, real deal. deal. Yeah, it's and so refreshing. Yeah, so. yeah, that's so cool that you said that because that's something like I think people look at my parents or the way we talk about my parents and they're like, oh, they're just perfect. And I'm like, that's the beauty of them is that they're not perfect and then exactly. the first to admit it. And I think growing up, I got to see that. It wasn't like some parents that tried to present themselves as perfect people. Those parents were like, hey, this is where we got it wrong. This is where I messed up. Or even coming to us, like, this is what I'm going through. And like letting us see the struggle so that we could see how they overcame it 
through Jesus was amazing. So yeah, that's cool important. that you said that. That's important. Well, speaking of good advice, we'll get to the question of the Well Let's Go podcast. This is an intimidating question. Yes. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I've been thinking about it all the way over here to the studio to make sure I was ready because I knew this was the question. Yes. Um, but I was thinking the first thought that came to my mind was advice that my dad gave to me mm -hmm. when I was in high school. I had my sights set on one thing and one thing only, and that was baseball. Hmm. Now, I'm sitting here talking to you today. I thought you were going to say music. Right, yeah. and I'm nowhere near a baseball field. Instead, yeah. I pick. Um, tonight I'll be picking up a guitar, and today we're talking about music and mm -hmm. ministry. And my dad could see the dreams that I had for being a baseball player. And so he gave me some advice, and he used sort of baseball hmm. terminology to That's help cool. it connect with me. And he said, son, it's awesome that you have dreams, but don't ever forget that your dreams mm -hmm. are minor league dreams compared to God's major league dreams wow. for you. That's good. And I think about that now and I go, you know, he was uh, speaking wisdom that even he didn't realize. Because if yeah. I would have kept chasing my dream of baseball, guess where I would have landed? In the minor, the minor leagues. leagues. Yeah. And, but God had this major league dream yeah. for me. And I started to realize, wow. Uh, what my dad was sharing with me was that sometimes wow. the best things that happen to us are the best things that never happen to us. Yeah. And that was the advice that my dad gave me. And I'm so thankful that he reminded me at every turn not to pursue my dreams. I think we mm -hmm. live in a world right now that's like, go whatever you yeah. want, you can have it. Like this individualistic mentality, yeah. like chase your dreams. That yeah. sounds really good. That sounds yeah. almost biblical. Yeah. But the reality is, as a Christ follower, we know that there's there's an author to our story and yeah. we're not the one. Yeah. So my dad was saying, put the pen back in the author's hands. Good. He's got a bigger dream for you. And uh, I'd have to say that's been that's the advice so that's good. pointed in my life in the direction it's gone. I love that, man. That it can speak to so many people, even though like, the best thing might be the thing that doesn't happen. Like, I think those are the things you, you don't think about or you don't yeah. think about the fact that like God's plan is so much bigger. You're not going to be able to see it. Yes. You know, you're not going to be able to see it, but you just have to trust. That's so cool. I was talking with um, this uh, gold medal figure skating champion, Scott mm -hmm. Hamilton. Have you met yeah, Scott? Uh -huh. it, it, but in his book, he has a sentence that says, think about all the things in your life that had to go wrong to get you where you are today. Wow. And I, I think we focus uh, not enough on the the bad yeah. things that have like we want to talk I know about it sounds kind of weird but the like, mountaintops which I actually think almost crazy? with our social media world it makes you like highlight the good times because that's the only times you focus on but it really is the hard times that sometimes make you who you are the obstacles the setbacks yep. the doors that closed yeah right I think I mean, sometimes we get those answered prayers in the form of a no yeah in the form hey Matthew you're not supposed to hold a baseball bat in your hands yeah you're supposed to pick up a guitar yeah and I'm going to use you in bigger ways mm -hmm. than you ever saw coming and yeah that's so good. That's a pretty beautiful lesson to learn. That's so good. I saw this video when I was like watching about your life because I don't I don't know a lot of your story. I know you. I know your music. Um, I, we laugh. I've told you this before, but I used to have your CD in my first car, <laughs> and so I listened to it on the way to school, nice. and it was like, I want you to do something. I was yes. like, if not us, then Man, who? That's yeah, right, oh, yeah. That's I right. loved it. So I know your music. I know you. Uh, I didn't know your story, so yeah. I was looking this up, and I saw that you had to have vocal cord surgery at one yeah. point of your mm -hmm. career, and I heard this message one time and it was talking about it was actually from pastor michael todd and he talked about how like you're planted but not buried and like the mm. same place that looks like death is destiny whenever you plant a seed like underground then it looks like it's over but that's like where it began and i just think so many wow. times we look at a moment like that where like you're a musician and yes. you have to have vocal surgery like, it's over but what did that journey look like for you and how did that kind of make you who you are today well you had mike todd on your podcast mm -hmm. and i listened to that episode and i became a fan of him through that actually. that's awesome but I love that analogy. And, you know, having vocal cord surgery, it really feels like the fatal blow to that's the news no singer wants to hear. Mm -hmm. And even hearing you remind me of that story brings me back to being in that doctor's office in mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee, and Dr. Galen Garrett telling mm -hmm. me, hey, this is what's going to happen. And we're going to have to have surgery. And even with this surgery, mm -hmm. there's a good chance your voice will never sound the same again. Wow, that's, so, that's scary. So yeah. not even the surgery was hopeful, yeah. right? And I think I had to come to grips with the reality that once again, maybe, well, well Lord, maybe this was my dream and mm -hmm. not your dream. Like it, it felt like, again, another dream was being pulled out of, yeah. my, out of my hands and out of my grip. And I really had to face the reality that I may never 
be able to, you know, I might come back sounding like Kermit the Frog. I don't yeah. know. I was just on the verge of my career really popping and uh, a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. I'm going to tell you what happened after that was the doctor's orders were simple, silence. Wow. And that's kind of hard for me. Yeah. Right? Like that's never been my thing, being <laughs> silent. But I'm going to tell you, the Lord spoke to me in powerful ways mm. like I never remembered before. And Psalm wow. 4610 became like a guiding verse mm. for me. Be still and know that I am God. Another translation says, cease striving. Wow. Now, like I know you get after it. I know you're a high achiever. I know you guys, your family. Mm -hmm. I'm that way as well. Mm -hmm. And so this was a forced season mm of ceased striving wow. and letting my dreams go and just saying, mm -hmm. okay, Lord, what if I wanted a relationship with you above mm -hmm. any other pursuit? Because the, the the truth is, is I love the Lord, but I get I get caught up in a lot of other yeah. pursuits that I want to go after. Yep. And then like before realizing it, my priorities start to slip. Yep. This, was a, this was a transforming season where I learned the importance of silence, wow. solitude, and prayer and how mm -hmm. that realigns my true purpose in life and the so being still and knowing that he is God. Of course, I'll never forget that moment mm -hmm. when the doctor kind of said, all right, you've rested your voice. We've had mm -hmm. this surgery, you know, take it for a spin. Mm -hmm. And I went back into the studio and I sang a song that happened to have the highest note I was ever going to have to record. Oh, no. And I was so scared that like something yeah. was going to break and it scared, scared me to death. Yeah. And I went into the studio and I began to sing this song called You Are Everything. Hmm. And there was just a significance to the message of that song That's coming out cool. of that season to go, even if I lost it all, hmm. if I have Jesus, I have what I need. Have you ever gone in your closet and you're like, what do I want to wear today? What do I even have to wear today? And you're looking around your clothes and you're like, why did I even buy that? That's not even necessarily me. Well, if you need a little extra help shopping, Stitch Fix is the place to go. It can help you shop and get all your things right in one place and they literally send it to you. Let me tell you a little bit about Stitch Fix Freestyle. It is a shop built just for you. Stitch Fix Freestyle is your trusted style destination where you can discover and instantly buy curated items based on your style, likes, and preferences. So whether you're looking for a brand you love or you want to try a new one at Stitch Fitch Freestyle, you can shop a range of over a thousand brands personalized to your size and fit. It's pretty amazing. So whatever you're looking for, you can go on. There's no subscription even needed. Go on, say some things that you like, and they're going to help curate a selection that's just fixed for your style. Then it's going to come to your door in the mail. I mean, that's a great way to shop. And you can know these are items that I really like and need in my closet. They have all kinds of styles available too, from workout and loungewear, to going out on a night of the town, to even going to work someday. Stitch Fix Freestyle has clothes for any and all occasions. Get started today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com slash woe, so you can really get a good idea on what your style is. That's stitchfix.com slash woe to try Stitch Fix Freestyle. Stitchfix.com slash woe. That's so good. Th those are the prayers that it's scary to pray, but it's like the most, um, I, I had a moment recently where I was kind of just going through a lot of fears and different things. Yeah. And I had this moment where I literally had to say like, God, like, even if, you know, this Man. happens, like, I trust you and you're all I need. And even whatever, like, you are first, I love you. If I have you, that's it. That's it. And I was literally, I think sometimes I say that and we say that in prayer, we say that in song, but I was like, weeping and saying it was the first time i feel like i truly was like i believe this mm. i'm truly saying this to you i truly mean this um and i've always meant it but i really like believed it in that moment and it was so powerful well, sometimes i think it's like it's that push come to shove moment yeah where, and that's why we need the trials in mm -hmm. our lives we yeah. don't want to need them but but our but spirit you need we know yeah. we need them yes. and the lord knows we need them those are the those are the character growing mm -hmm. seasons i mean you talk about if I would have never gone through that season, mm -hmm. now guess what happens? Like every time, moments before I walk on stage, like tonight, I'll go on stage. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, there is a moment before I step on yeah. stage where I remember my voice being taken away from me. Wow. And I remember the God who brought me through that. Wow. And I remember so cool. there's only one reason I get to stand on stage mm -hmm. tonight, and that's because my God is faithful. Yeah. That's because I'm doing his will. Mm -hmm. And if tonight is my last song, mm -hmm. right, if I lose my voice again and it's over, I know I'm going to be okay because okay. I've already yeah. been there, yep. right? Once you've been in the fire, 
Yeah. Right? And come out of you it. You have a confident trust because like, you know this yes. is where my God shows up. You this ima- is how he does it. Imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what kind of confidence they had after oh, the furnace. yeah. They were like, what? We just came <laughs> out of this? Nothing can touch I me think because God is with me. Yes, you know? like the story of Joshua. So Joshua, after they entered the promised land, had to go through like all of these different battles. I counted it one time. It was like 31 different wow. kings he had to go through, which I actually Dang. thought was kind of cool because it's like 31. There's 31 days in a month. There's challenges every day. There's things you have to go through. But like, God just kept showing up. Like when he walked around the wall, Jericho seven times and the wall fell or whenever the sun and moon stood still. Like you got to know like all 31, his confidence was growing and growing and growing. And he was able to lead because he had the faith to do it. He was able to say the things that no one else could say. Yeah, battle by battle. And the thing too is like what I take comfort in with like guys like Joshua or when I think about Moses, Mm -hmm. like think about David, all of these great, leaders who saw God do mm-hmm. great things still needed reminders yeah. that God is who he is yeah. and he does what he says he does. Like, That's right. And so sometimes I get discouraged because I'm like, Lord, I've been through all these fires. Mm-hmm. Why do I still have these moments where yeah. I'm like doubting that you're going to show yeah. up? And it's like, why? Because I'm not God. Because you're human. Because I'm human. Yeah. And he, when we need those reminders, he provides those reminders. Yeah. And I'm so, so thankful good. for it. I love that example That's of Joshua. So good. That's powerful. I love what you said, too, about not striving, like cease to strive. And Psalms 46 has been a key thing for me as well to read. I read that so many times and so many seasons in my life because it's like it's just, you know, be still. And I love how it's like even when all the bad things in the world are happening, it's not like, oh, when everything's going great, be still. It's like if everything goes wrong, like be still. <laughs> be still. I know, but somebody asked me one time, they're like, why is striving a bad thing? Like striving, it Mm. should be a good thing. And um, you hit this so well, and I just wanted to reiterate it. It's, It's not that like going after things is bad. It's that when we try to build our own, you know, life, our own career, our own dreams, our that's own right. thing, that's when it gets bad. Like I'm striving in my own strength to do my own thing, to that's create my right. own platform yes. instead of like, I'm actually letting the Lord yeah. build the house. I'm letting the Lord do yeah. the thing for his plan and, you know, the kingdom's plan. That's it's the big difference, difference of like striving for yourself or, you know, working for the Lord who's working through you for the kingdom plan, you know? So I was writing, um, I had a songwriting appointment with this guy who's a famous country songwriter. Mm -hmm. I love country music. And I started my career behind the scenes writing songs for other artists. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so I had like some country songs Mm -hmm. recorded and stuff like that. But I got together with this guy and I knew, like he wrote The House That Built Me from Miranda. Like I knew his songs, right? Hall of Fame guy. And I thought, I walked in there striving, striving to write the next country number one song for Carrie Underwood or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he must have seen the ambition in my eyes. Yeah. Well, we start writing, but he kept interrupting our session by asking me questions about my life. Hmm. He's like, tell me about your your music that you make with your records. I said, well, and I would get off on these tangents. I'd say, well, I I write songs inspired by people's stories. Like like this guy, Jordan, who wrote to me about his battle with drug addiction. He was Mm -hmm. an all-American and he got hooked on Oxycontin, but then God changed his life and now now he's got a master's degree and he's a teacher and a husband and a coach. And and I wrote a song for him called Hello, My Name is Child mm-hmm. of the One True King because wow. that's what he said in his letter. And I got, I guess I got all animated just like I did just wow. now. And he stopped me and he said, you know, Matthew, we might write a big old number one country hit today and that's all well and good, but that's not what matters. Wow. And I said, and I just got humbled in a second right there. Mm-hmm. He goes, I said, what do you, what do you mean? He's like, what you just talked about? writing songs, mm-hmm. telling people that there's a God who's never done with them, mm-hmm. that they have an identity in Christ that mm-hmm. they could never earn on their own. That's the stuff wow. that matters. And then he used a word, I'll never forget it. It was a fancy songwriter word, but he said, that is what has eternality. Wow. Now, eternality is just a fancy word for saying eternal value, something wow. that matters beyond the temporary, beyond the now, beyond this life. That is so and cool. And that, to me, when you start talking about the difference between different kinds of striving. Yeah. That's that's what you're speaking to me is like those are the exhausting striving is out of our own strength yep. with our own goals mm-hmm. with something that doesn't yep. matter beyond today. Yep. The, wow. the the worthy striving is the stuff that has eternality to that's it. That's so I cool. walked out of there going, "Lord, forgive me." 
Lord for yep. you. And guess what? We never wrote that number one country hit. No. Nope. And I don't care. It was a beautiful day. Yeah. And you've continued to write songs that have truly changed people's life for um, eternity. So that is the coolest thing. There's a verse, I think it's Psalms 127. We go back to it so much, but it talks about, unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers labor in vain. Yes. And it talks about like eating the bread of anxious toil, but um, he gives his beloved sleep. And I always think about that because I think that's when you know, am I striving my own street or am I letting the Lord build yeah. the house? And it's like, do I go to bed and like anxious? Like they say, I stay up late anxious. I wake up early anxious, but he gives his beloved sleep. So that's so cool that you saw that in your life. I love that you write people's stories. I think it's amazing yeah. uh, because your songs are relatable. You, you hear your own story when you hear someone else's story because mm. it's the human experience. You go yeah. through so many things. What was it that made you start wanting to write other people's stories and like the power you've seen behind that? Well, it's crazy. It was my throat surgery. Oh, wow. And so that's the crazy thing about it. It's like the sometimes the worst things that happen wow, to us are the best. That's sometimes so cool. So coming out of that vocal cord surgery, while I was sitting still, while I was being silent, wow. I I felt like God was using my own trial to turn my attention towards the hurting of other people. Hmm. And I literally had this idea that's crazy. when my voice comes back, I remember writing this down. Not if my voice comes back, when, when? my voice comes back. Lord, use my voice to give a voice to others. Wow. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how. So I had this creative idea. This It was like a creative experiment. Mm -hmm. What if instead of writing songs inspired by my life, what if I put out an all points bulletin just to tell people, hey, have you ever been told that your story matters? Hmm. Well, if not, you're hearing it from me. Hmm. I want to hear your story. That's so You good. tell me what to write so songs needed. about. So thousands of stories came in Yeah. and they still come in. And now at every one of my concerts, people will walk up, you know, and give my tour give manager an envelope addressed to me, and it's their handwritten letter. Wow. And what it taught me is there are so many people right here, right now, who have been made to feel that their story is mm. insignificant, mm -hmm. their story doesn't matter, mm -hmm. or maybe their story is too messed up, mm. that it could never make a, a worthy contribution to the world. Mm -hmm. And so I found something really beautiful mm. and, and that's changed my life was mm -hmm. seeing how people were willing to share the story of their life and to share from broken chapters of their yeah, story too, yeah. in the hopes that like God could yeah, really do what he said. Good stuff. Yeah, that he could redeem wow. even the messed up parts of their story. Wow. And guess what stories I'm drawn to the most? It's like when people share honestly and vulnerably stuff. about yeah. like here's what i went through mm -hmm. here's what god's showing me or here's yeah. what i'm learning or here was my breakthrough yeah. so it's been a powerful experience and all That's from awesome. my own personal trial yeah where i lost my That's voice crazy. that he gave me eyes to see how i could be used to be a voice for other people Sometimes it is hard not to worry about the what ifs in life or wonder what if this happens? What if this happens? What if I get in a dangerous situation? Well, ladies, I know that is true for us. And don't worry, I have a solution to help you a little bit whenever you're walking in the grocery store alone or going on a walk by yourself or anywhere you where you just feel like you need a little extra something. It's called the birdie. Let me show you. I have it on my keys right here. Super cute too. Mine's yellow and it's very easy to use. It's a personal safety alarm. It's easy to carry, easy to to use all you do is literally pull the birdie and it's going to sound a super loud 130 decibel siren and a flashing strobe light to help get the attacker away which whenever i've heard from security guards in the past they've said like the best thing you can do is make a lot of noise and this is certainly going to make a lot of noise and hopefully get you out of a dangerous situation unlike pepper spray or other different you know things that you can carry there's no harm to you in this there's no potential harm to you it's nothing's going to go wrong you literally just pull the birdie and that's it. Super simple. Birdie can go with you anywhere that you go. It can attach to your keys and look super cute too. They are so awesome and have thousands of five-star reviews. So join the flock today for a safer tomorrow. Right now, She's Birdie is offering Whoa That's Good listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com slash whoa. So go to she'sbirdie.com slash whoa. That's spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E dot com slash whoa for 15% off your first purchase that she's birdie.com slash whoa that's crazy i just like want to point that out to you that's listening so many of these moments we're talking about came from some of the hardest times in our Come life on. and so many things that god spoke to us that set us <laughs> So many things that God spoke Even Siri to us. agrees. Siri agrees. She said, I don't know if I understand. <laughs> Siri, let me help you. Let me explain. 
so many times, you know, you actually, like Siri just said, you actually don't understand yes, what he's doing. That's right. But if you put your eyes on him and seek to understand and silence yourself, I love how we've been talking about like, yeah. get quiet before the Lord. Just listen. Just take it in for a minute. You know, don't try to figure it all out. Just let it happen and you'll be amazed at where God leads you. That's good. Um, I love your new song because. What if? Because yeah. it, we, we share a common experience of skydiving. And oh skydiving gosh. gave me a whole new perspective on life. Like, did you love it? I loved it. You did? Like, I loved okay, it. Okay, well, that's where our stories okay, differ. Okay, so our, our stories <laughs> differ a little bit in that. But, like, I loved it. So this day, I woke up. Okay. Basically, I woke up. It was my birthday. I think I was turning, like, maybe 19 I think I was turning 19. Yeah. But anyways, I had like been dealing with so much fear. I was just an anxious person. And mm. I was like, I am no longer going to be afraid. So this is kind of like, I'm not saying everybody go do this, but I got a tattoo that says fearless. <laughs> and I was like, I am like just not going to live with fear anymore. Yeah. I'm going to remind myself every day that like I am with God. Like God is with me and I, I don't that. have to be afraid. Yeah. So anyways, I was like, what can I do that would be like so scary yeah. that would just like prove that I'm getting past this? And it was skydiving. I was like, skydiving Amazing. would be a great start. And so I did it and it was so crazy. And one of the things that, you know, I've kind of held on to, which is so funny, is something you talked about in your video as well, is the jokes that they make on the way up. Yes. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, this is like, actually, like skydiving humor. Oh, it's skydiving humor, but it's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. They're experts. We're novices. Yeah. But the, like the guy would say something like, we're going up and he's shouting. If your parachute doesn't open, don't bother screaming because it's too late anyway. Oh, yeah. Like, why no. would you say that to me? My mom said, do I need a helmet? And they were like, no, it won't help anyways. And they were like, we're like, so what happens if, and they were like, you no, died. No. Like, they were just like, but they were laughing and you're like, Haha, Way too nonchalant not about Not funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyways, um, then I did it and I loved it and I thought it was so such a cool experience and but whatever. But tell me about your experience I, and the song and why yeah, why you wrote it. I first of all, I hated the experience. <laughs> I shouldn't say hate, but I strongly disliked the experience. It's so funny. Because my guy was some kind of a trickster Oh no guy. Oh no. I don't know what it was the last jump of the day and I re didn't realize it, but I was the only beginner on the plane. Everybody else on oh, the plane, no. they were expert skydivers. The pilot didn't realize there was a me on the plane, so he was taking them to an extra high altitude so they could work on their free falling. Oh, no. So before I know it, I'm in like the Ringling Brothers of skydiving. Okay, this is different. It was it was the most frightening experience. The, the moment terrifying. where your feet are dangling off the edge of the plane. Oh yeah, yeah. No, nah, I don't. Yeah. I didn't care for that. Then we, then we jump. <laughs> they start like flipping me. Uh, like yeah. they would spin me, no, no, no. and I was I like, like that. of course, your skin's like peeled oh, back, yeah. so you can't even create facial expressions to let no. them know. I don't enjoy it. And you it. actually <laughs> do try to scream, but the wind is so strong that you can't actually talk. Yes. It's an awkward moment. It was awkward. I have to say, so I had a little video, not as good as, as y'all's, <laughs> but it is so embarrassing. Like when your feet are dangling over and like you're about to go. Yeah. I think like everything in me was saying like stay on the plane, but like yes. I was still going to go. So I have like the biggest like triple chin <laughs> and like the video and then I go and it's like... Poof, the skydiving oh, triple the, chin. The skydiving triple chin. It's I, a thing. You know, it's, it's funny. You talk about like being an anxious person. I never really thought of myself as one. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, like, I had my first couple of panic attacks mm. in the last couple of years. Wow. And they came on like it. Like I was going to get something nowhere near as scary as jumping out of a plane. Mm -hmm. I was getting an MRI. My mm. neck was hurting, and my doctor said, we'll go get an MRI. And I showed up at the doctor's office, and the nurse said, are you claustrophobic? I was like, no. Mm. It's like, oh, good. This will be a breeze. So they put me in this on this bed and then lower me into this yeah. MRI oh, tube. Yeah. And she's like, now you have to be very still for whatever, 15 minutes or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is a breeze. I'll close my eyes. Maybe take a nap. Yeah. I never get to be still like this. But inexplainably, I began to completely lose my mind wow and to the point where like I, I could feel sweat and all of a sudden i was just like i can't move i can't this is wow i'm gonna die or like and i was shouting let me out of here like it was i was so embarrassed wow. they they bring me out i'm covered in sweat and i'm completely humiliated yeah because i'm like what 
what I just happened? became a child. Like, what happened, you know? Yeah. And if anybody's had panic attacks, I'm sure they can relate to the feeling of, like, the no. shame that comes yeah. after that. I used to have that, too. And yeah. I guess I just began to realize, like, I am so all about trying to be in control of mm-hmm. everything in my mm-hmm. life. And sometimes moments like that need to happen mm-hmm. just to be reminded that, like, look, we're not in control. We are not in mm-hmm. control. And and to resurrender my thoughts, my emotions, mm-hmm. my feelings. So all that to say is, like, mm-hmm. I think the idea to go skydiving might have been somewhat similar to yours of just, like, going, you know what? This yeah. is not going to have control over me because yeah. I know who's really in control. Yeah. And I'm going to go do this, yep. right? Of course, once I got to 16,000 feet, I immediately regretted that decision. <laughs> You're like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I know. I had just put out a song called What If? And yeah. the idea was I want to get to the end of my life with no regrets mm-hmm. and no what ifs. And that's become that's my personal mission. So I wanted I to do something that, that illustrated that. No Would I do it ifs. again? Maybe not. You I know, might go I the tattoo the same route. same thing, though. I, said, I was like, I loved it. Would I do it again? Maybe, Maybe. in, like, Hawaii. But okay. other than that, probably not. Yes. Like, if it was, like, some gorgeous view that I was like, okay, this is cool. But yeah. no, probably not. And, like, maybe if my friends, like, wanted to do it. Yeah. But maybe not me just volunteering myself <laughs> to do it. But it was amazing. And I found that to be true, too, because I think a lot of my fear – and most people's fear comes from the thought of, I don't have control over the situation. Yeah. And then you're like, I want to fix it, but you can't. And then that is a scary thought. Um, but that is when you have to surrender that control to yeah. the Lord. And that's what I love about God. It's like when God came to these people in the Old Testament and said, do not be afraid. Mm-hmm. It wasn't some like harsh command of like, you shouldn't fear. It was like, do not be afraid for I am with you. Like you have to understand like the reason you don't have to fear is because I okay. am with you. Yeah. Like I got it. So you have and, to surrender that. I mean, think about how many times are, are you and Christian going to say that to honey? Yes. You know? How many times have I said that to my daughters? Yes. Like, hey, I got you. I'm yeah, here. that's so I true. I think about my when my oldest Lulu was, we were trying to teach her to learn how to swim and like stand on the edge of the pool, you know, and like. It's like my arms are out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's okay. I'm mm-hmm. here. I'm That's not. So awesome. My arms aren't going to fail you. I'm going to catch yeah. you. You know what I mean? And her seeing that and trusting mm-hmm. in that, and I that, is that moment has always brought me this reminder of like God saying, like, Wow, I'll be afraid. I am with you. That is I am so with you. good. So. What a beautiful picture. I, honey isn't old enough yet to do. You know, yeah. a lot. So, but now that I think about it, there are so many times where she's crying in her crib and I'll get her and I'm like, mama's I'm got you. you, I got you. And the yeah. comfort. The comfort yeah. and stops crying. Like, Come that's on. so beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Friends, I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube, if you notice my earrings, but I have been loving these. They're little lightning bolts. And I actually got them from this store that I love called Ana Luisa. It is so great. And also from someone who does like jewelry, but can't always wear it because I'm actually allergic to nickel. It's sometimes hard to find some hypoallergenic places. Well, Ana Luisa is that for you. So if you have sensitive skin, hypoallergenic, they have great jewelry options just for you. Um, Ana Luisa is spelled A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A. They have pieces that are simple but stunning and prices that are very fair starting at just $39 which is pretty amazing and the prices are even lower for you right now 20% off at shop.analuisa.com slash whoa also got this beautiful necklace it's like a Victorian necklace like I said great prices but really beautiful options I think this is a really cool part about Ana Luisa's brand is that every single Friday they drop a new release which is so great so if you like to change your jewelry out a lot you don't like to stick with the same pieces every Friday they're going to be coming with something new on their website and with their brand, which is awesome. And Ana Luisa backs up their quality with a 365-day guarantee to replace or refund any pieces if you're not 100% satisfied, which is very cool because sometimes you have to try on your jewelry until they get that. But if you order it and you don't love it, they're going to help you out. Absolutely recommend checking out Ana Luisa. It's super amazing. Like I said, prices starting at $39. They're currently running their biggest sale of the year. You can get 20% off right now when you go to shop Ana Luisa. I'll spell that again for y'all just so you have it. 20% off at shop.analuisa.com slash woe. A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash woe. Go get your new jewelry today. Okay, so holidays are coming up. We yeah. have Christmas, of course, coming, Come which I'm excited on. about. And you have an album I want to talk about. But before that, we must talk about the holiday that cannot be forgotten. Thanksgiving <laughs> and your yes. epic gobble, gobble video. Epic, epic. How did this happen? Well, the pandemic made me a little weird. I think that's All what of it this, was. right? I started, you know, I've always made up funny songs for my kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
But I've had people be like, you know, sometimes on stage I'll make up a song on the spot, like improv and stuff. That's awesome. But I had this like idea for a song called, a deeply spiritual song called Gobble Gobble. Deeply. But the challenge was, is like, Touching. there are so many songs about Christmas. Yeah. But like, who who in their right mind would write a song about Thanksgiving? And I, I issued the challenge and I accepted my own challenge. You and I wrote the most the ridiculous song about Thanksgiving, about grandpa passing out. Because he's passing gas and we had to light pumpkin candles, so all this stuff. Funny. So people started really liking this song at Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. And now I get tons of requests at my concerts from these little kids. They're all like, it's they so don't want to hear what it is. They don't want to hear no. my Jesus song. They just want to no. hear gobble, gobble, gobble. gobble. <laughs> Who knew you had a hit? It's so funny. So like, I don't know. You mentioned that you watched me and Christian's reels, our dance videos. Yes, so yes. These are real like uh, viral. I was very impressed with Christian's hey, skills. got some moves. He's got some he moves. He needs to, you know, hone in on some things. Yeah, but he's got yeah. some moves. He's got a good coach. He, yeah, I mean, I'm trying. <laughs> I, I do what I can. But no, the there's a reel that's like going around. He's like, I understood the assignment. And yes. you could do that. It's like, there are no thanksgiving songs and then do like your oh gobble, that's gobble. a good idea hey i'm just hoping okay you I'm need to coach me on reels i got you i, I will be your <laughs> real coach idea. that would actually be really funny okay but after thanksgiving we of course have christmas yes. and you have is it your third christmas album yes okay so basically i i want to write a song for every holiday <laughs> well you should that, that would be a great challenge so we had ryan o'neill on the podcast and he did the whole enneagram series and yes. then he did like the uh, all the seasons and he did all that so, so he's covering he, every yes, component and he's now doing like the planets so so you i can do the musical right version of that do all the holidays it's a good idea i can't wait it's well gonna be great. i love christmas music yeah and i listen to it uh, dangerously early in the year. Like, you know, a lot of people have very strong rules. You're very opinionated but on when I, you start. But I'm noticing a lot of that changing yeah. because I think it's just we've been through such hard times that, like, mm -hmm. I'm so anxious and looking forward to Christmas. Same. Because, and I think the reason is because of all of the season promises us. Yeah, it, it's a reminder it's of what God offers us every day of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I've been thinking, it's like we look around, it's like hope. Mm -hmm. hard to find peace joy love mm -hmm. kindness you know yeah. all these things seem to be in short supply and yeah. so um i love christmas music i love the classics mm -hmm. and i love to kind of get my like inner michael buble going, i love it you know? it's awesome matthew buble so i got some <laughs> classics and then i love trying to write maybe future classics so i love writing yeah. christmas songs the album i just put out is called we need christmas i love that and we i actually wrote this song do you know the country group maddie and tay mm -hmm. so i wrote this song, We Need Christmas, with Maddie and Tay oh, that's awesome. for their Christmas album last year. And we wrote it on Zoom because of the pandemic. Wow. But I love the song so much. I was like, I called him. I was like, do you mind if I record it too? Yeah. And uh, it just feels like a special song that's that reminds cool. us like, hey, we need each other yeah, this Christmas. Do. Our ministry is doing this cool campaign throughout the holidays mm -hmm. where we're finding individuals or families who, mm -hmm. who need Christmas, mm -hmm. right? We, there's a it's family really who cool. lost everything in a fire and wow. our ministry is going to surprise them with That's a so with a cool. with a Christmas blessing. Wow. And I'm encouraging other people to think about yeah. like who around you needs Christmas yeah. this year. That's and how such could you be thought. Christmas for them, you know? That's awesome. What how can we help? Like can people be involved with your ministry? Yeah, well uh, my ministry is called popwe.org. Cool. I'll tell you what we should do is we should find um, an individual or family in need. Yes, and let's our two do podcasts it. could like let's do go it. in together and find like right here. Let's do it. So yeah. the Matthew S podcast and the Whoa That's Good podcast. Let's do it. Which by the way, before I leave, I have to thank you and your mom because you guys were the first we were guest your first. That's on awesome. my podcast. It was so fun. It and was it awesome. was so cool to hear you guys. I know both of your stories, but to yeah. hear you talk together was so it's much cool. fun. So, so maybe we do something like together for We Need friend. Christmas. I would love that. Let's do it. Let's that do sounds it. awesome. All right. So you have that and you're on tour or have a tour coming up. So tell everybody about that. We yeah. make sure everybody gets in all the things. Yeah. So we're, we're doing a Christmas tour of like awesome. eight concerts. and uh, awesome. And then we're, we're going to do a special virtual concert cool. for a lot of people who are unable to travel or for different things. That's we great. started doing these virtual concerts during the pandemic and we'd have people watching from the Philippines. Yeah, and it's Brazil. actually it's like so great. It's like so good that we, I feel like everybody did get so good at virtual world because there is this whole world out there awesome. who wants to be in on this. So I, I love it. For that aspect, it's been a good thing. Oh, it's awesome. Well, it's awesome. I enjoyed talking to you so much. This has been so great. You threw out so much. I was thinking about how on our Instagram, we always post like the best piece of advice. I'm like, you had so many. We're going to oh, have like man. 
man. So many things to think through. Well, but you I just want to say you're such an inspiration to not just to me, but to the West family. And I, I told you. you this when you were on my show, but like what you do with your podcast and with Live mm -hmm. Original, the way that you live your life and the witness that you are as a dad of two daughters, like you just need to know, like, wow, it it matters, Thank and you. it is uh, it's something that's not lost on a parent mm -hmm. like me. So, from a friend Thank to friend, you. I'm glad Thank to know you. you. From a dad of daughters, I'm yeah. glad you're on this earth wow. to Thank continue you. to to show my daughters how what it looks like mm -hmm. to live original, to live for Jesus, Thank you. and to always put God first. So, I I'm just that, so grateful for you. That means so much. That's the best compliment I could possibly get. I love doing what I get to do. Honestly, it's the greatest gift. And I'm thankful that I got to do this with you today. In person. Um, in person. This is the we best. We did it. This is the best. Seriously, thank you so much. <laughs> this was great. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I know you got so much out of that. I encourage you to go back and listen. Go take notes. Write it down. And whatever season of your life that you're in, maybe it's the hardest one you've ever been in, just know that that is the place that God can meet you today. And so silence yourself for a minute. Stop striving and let God speak into that. Appreciate you guys, and I'll talk to you next Wednesday.